So what we're going to talk about right here is making sure that you've got a session saved so that anybody can open it on any computer. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go do a file save copy in. That's right here under the file menu in Pro Tools save copy in. And what this is going to do is it's going to pull all the audio files into one location. So I've got my session here and I'm, I'm done with it. I've got everything set up. I like it. it Sounds great, fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna go to File, Save Copy In. And over here under Session, we're gonna make sure it just says Latest. Yep, that's fine. Uh, if you're taking it to a studio where they have an older version of Pro Tools, you can save it in an older version of Pro Tools here and it will open up somewhere else. But for the most part, most sessions are pretty much up to date for a while. Uh, sample rate should be the same as your session. Um, for me, it's mostly just 44.1. Audio file type, wave, bit depth, same as your session, 24-bit. Interleave, yes, make sure those stereo files are stereo. Items to copy, this is the most important part right here, is audio files. Make sure that's set to audio files. You usually don't have to click on these boxes here, but if you want to make sure that your Elastic Audio is rendered, then you can, uh, well, sorry, it's, it's going to, don't copy rendered Elastic Audio files. I wouldn't check that box, just leave it unchecked. Um, selected tracks only, no main playlist only. If you have a whole bunch of different uh, playlists and you wanna make sure it only does the main playlist, you can check this box. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit OK. And it's gonna ask us where do you wanna save it. So I'll just save it to my desktop for now. And we'll go over here. Uh, actually, let's save it in um, music. There we go, we'll save it in music. There we go, boop. Tony Grun, drop and slide, final mix. Make sure, make sure that it's got your name first and then dash, drop, and then the name of the track. Don't just send it with the name of the track because I need to know who it's coming from. Whoever you're sending it to needs to know who it's coming from, right? So they can keep everything organized. So we're gonna hit save. And it should take a while to do it, not that long, depends on how good your computer is. And then we're gonna go over here to my music files one here, and we're gonna look, here it is, right there. Open it up. Now, when you've done this, your audio files folder should be huge. It should be a lot of stuff in here, 1.3 gigabytes, uh, 1.35 gigs in this case. So uh, this is, yeah, it's got everything in here. You can see all this stuff is in here. Why? I feel like it's missing. Oh, I know why it's didn't put the bounces in. The one's called bounces were in the other one is because I clicked that box that said main playlist only and those bounces file were not uh, part of it. So now yeah, there we go. Here's all my files and you can see they're all, these because it came from Ableton Live, they're all the same size, 84.3 megabytes. So I had to mute y'all for that sneeze. Uh, right, so that's, that's that, that's how that works. And that's pretty much it. It's not hard, but you have to do it. And this is the problem is that a lot of people just don't do it. They just kind of forget to do it. And it, it does become a problem if you, if, you don't, uh, if you don't do it because then somebody's gonna open up and they're not gonna have anything to play. Now, uh, Noli, you said, is this process similar if I'm saving from Ableton just as far as the audio tracks? And the answer is, the answer is kind of, but I'm actually gonna go through it in Ableton Live right now, in just a second, all right? So I'm gonna show you in Ableton Live, but the answer is yeah, pretty much. It's not 100% similar, but it's like 90% similar. Um, and then, let's see here. Oh, Steven is here. Yes, Oop. okay, cool. All right. So that's, I just answered it. Never mind. Okay. Well, let's let me show you. Let me let me let me just show you this uh, answer. Let me show you the answer instead of just talking about it. Okay. So I'm gonna save this. And the next, the final step that I do is I just uh, well, did we do it already? Hold on. Yeah. 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 So that's the final step that I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this down, and we're gonna actually quit out of Pro Tools real quick. I'm gonna open up Ableton Live, and I'm gonna show you in Ableton Live how to make sure you've got everything set up correctly. So in Live Suite, 
Max for live, one, 10.1.9. All right, so let's just open up the one we started way back in the day, KMFD what? I bet y'all forgot about this track. Oh yeah. So this one here. Awesome. All right, sounds good. Let me just uh, take this up from 124 to 128. Cool. Yeah, the classic one, right? Okay, so we got this here. What we want to do is we want to make sure everything saves as uh, so some of these are actually, so, so with Ableton Live, one of the things you want to make sure is the, the main difference here is that if you're using your own, if you're making your beats in Ableton Live with your own synths and stuff like that, just make sure that uh, I've got all the samples. And so when you do this in Ableton Live, we're going to go to File and we're going to go to Save, uh, Collect All and Save. That's the one you want right there. Collect all and save. Hit OK on that. And now in here, specify which media files are to be copied into the project. Just hit yes for all of them. Because that way, even like the factory packs, you might be sending it to somebody who didn't download that particular factory pack for whatever reason. You don't want to need to make them like, there's some factory packs that are like, a gigabyte or two gigabytes that I just I've never downloaded them because I just don't use those samples like um, like orchestral mallets like I'm not I'm not interested in orchestral mallets uh, from Ableton Live so I never downloaded those so I don't want to have them in my library um, necessarily so if you hit yes if you use them that means they're just gonna load up with this project and then I don't have to download them to my library and keep them in my library forever they're just gonna be part of this project so I hit OK and now it's going to copy everything out, which in this case didn't take long at all. You didn't even see a blip on the radar up here on the screen. But what's going to happen is it's going to save it into the session, which is right over here under teaching KMFD Wall project. And you can see it's 69.2 megabytes, which in this case is not big. Now, can anybody tell me why the Pro Tools session was so much bigger than my Ableton Live session is? Why was the Pro Tool session over a gigabyte? And this is like 69 megabytes. Yeah, you're basically right, Linking Hearts. It's not frozen. Um, so that Pro Tool session, remember, uh, is it because the audio files are looped in Ableton? Yes, you're, you're both correct. The Pro Tool session was stems from my Ableton Live session. So basically I'd done all the work in Ableton Live and I brought it over into Pro Tools to do the final mix. So the tracks were all, just the whole thing was in a long audio file. And that's not what we're working with here in Ableton Live. What we're working with in Ableton Live is little loops and drum hits and little pieces of audio files. If you wanna be really, really careful about stuff and make sure that everything is 100% gonna work in somebody else's uh, Ableton Live, what I recommend you do is actually go through and uh, do the stems thing actually here. The easiest way would be just to, to command shift R to export it and rendered track and do all individual tracks and then import it back into Ableton Live if you're really concerned about it. But if you know the person pretty well, um, like in this case, like usually the collect all and save will work fine. Um, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make y'all do this extra step here uh, for the projects, but just do collect all and save, and send everything, and make sure it saves everything in there, in Ableton Live. So, but your sessions aren't gonna be as big as they were in Pro Tools because you're working with pieces of audio, not the full track of audio. And I think that should be about good for that. Um, it's not that involved actually. 